Hey, everybody! It must be the first Monday of the month because we are here with the Maw of Mike, and that would make me Mike, and this would make it my Maw. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in now and uh, and joining us for the the kickoff of the spooky season. Here we are in October, the spookiest of seasons here in the Northern Hemisphere, and uh, I hope those of you who are planning to observe, you know, whether that be secularly or, you know, religiously or whatever, uh, you know, Samhain, Halloween, All Hallows, whatever happens, that, that most commercialized of holidays, which is just coming up in now 29 days. Um, but there we go. But here we go. So it's, uh, let's 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 not focus on that. And let's focus on what we are here to talk about, which is what's coming in DCC land for October. So thank you very much for 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 uh, joining, and good to see everybody in the chat. So uh, we got a somewhat slighter show, a uh, uh, shorter show this month. Uh, we probably only do about a half hour, mostly because, um, as you probably know, we moved. <laughs> so we 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 basically packed up we put everything and moved from one warehouse to another so uh we figured it would probably be not the wisest thing to make a lot of releases in october as we were currently well actually we as in not my job whatsoever it is as poor jen brinkman and as as poor uh dj foxy and uh and whoever else they can you know rope into stuff are currently moving things around in our warehouse in fort wayne and uh getting our logistics rolling again so stuff starts showing up so no so short show there's stuff not a lot of Releases, but that does not mean that we don't have stuff to talk about because um, there's as you if you've anybody has seen the Twitch schedule we were just talking about this with Elena uh, it's going to be a busy month uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on Twitch um, we have uh, we have as, as some of you have may may know we just I think we had now two shows of the Grimtooth Trap show uh, hosted by Grimtooth himself and featuring uh, some some developers so that is going to be a weekly show which is kind of a uh, kind of is uh, laying the groundwork for the launch of the Grimtooth Trap or original adventures reincarnated number 112 whatever we're on right now and uh so and then tomorrow is going to be a kind of a bi-monthly or you know i always get that wrong bi-monthly bi bi-weekly -bi twice a month is what i'm going to say uh, uh we're which is called a return to the purple planet uh which is kind of going to be our take on what grim's tooth is doing we're going to be showing off what's happening in uh the thing apparently which was just a leaked and then announced today. Uh, there is a backer kit page set up for uh, for uh, Return to the Purple Planet. A lot of stuff going on with that. Uh, the stuff which is out there currently on the backer kit is just the tip of the iceberg. So trust me, there's going to be a lot of Purple Planet content going along. And tomorrow, I'm going to be me, and uh, joining me is going to be Mr. Purple Planet himself, Harley Stroh. So we are going to basically give the lowdown on what is the Purple Planet, what is peril on the Purple Planet, everything you need to know to get you ready for the Purple Planet in 121 days. So you know we're <laughs> we're we're building we're building we're building uh, we're building buzz early. So uh, but it'll be a great show. Uh, it's going to kind of be a revolving cast. Uh, you know we're going to have various people on from time to time talking about stuff about the Purple Planet, and uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be. I'm looking forward to going back to the Purple Planet, Purple Planet and I have already seen stuff. So anyway, so uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's dive in and uh, let me bring on my guest uh, who will be joining me momentarily, and uh, I'm going to step out for a minute. And then when I step back, I will be joined by my guest. Yeah, so don't go anywhere. Hey, everybody. I am back. And joining with me is Zog. Zog, he is the author of, uh, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Blackout at Crater Valley. I believe that was your kind of the first one. But more important, we can talk about that one. But more importantly, you are also the author of uh, the Road Crew Pit Stop number two, Caught in the Mouth of Chaos, which we just released just mere weeks ago as part of uh, the Road Crew Game Day. So uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Zog. Pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Thanks very much, Michael. It's awesome to be here and um, so stoked to be on the mall mic and here with all the Twitch viewers and talk about this uh, awesome road crew exclusive adventure. Yes. <laughs> well, well, good. I'm glad you're here because it's going to be a very short show of your work. So anyway, so all right. So, uh, so, um, so basically, I'm going to ask you the question, which I ask everybody who comes on who you know to, to talk about the show is uh, there's already excitement about the halfling adventure going on in the chat. Uh, so basically, I kind of already know the answer to this, uh, but feel free to elaborate on you. But so basically, how did the adventure come to be? Well, uh, I mean, it's uh, you guys did um, a very cool project uh, contest. Uh, was it a year and a half ago or two years ago or something? So something, long ago. Something like that. The mystery map contest, which um, I had had such a good time doing. 
uh, Blackout and Crater Valley. And I'm such a DCC uh, diehard that I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to put something in for this. I couldn't resist it. And, and I submitted and, and that kind of got you and I talking. Um, of course I was not, I, I didn't win, but I think, you know, I, I got, got some attention from you guys and you and I got to talking about it and started kicking around these ideas about what, you know, maybe doing something together. And right away, uh, there was the, the, the possibility of doing a halfling themed adventure, which I, you know, there was a few different ideas that had floated, but right away that just jumped out at me. Like something, you know, I've always loved halflings and, and, and just the and I particularly love the DCC halfling, mm-hmm. and I just to, to, to do something that really dives into into the the you know role of halflings in the DCC world. I couldn't. There's there's no way I could say no to that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we haven't we 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 haven't really done a halfling focused one. Uh, in fact, a lot of them aren't really the race focused. But you know, I mean, since it was sh- since it was planned to be a short adventure anyway, it made sense to start with halflings. So you know, <laughs> yeah. The the halfling is uh, kind of a, a clutch player in the in the DCC world. Having the luck battery on hand is you know the the thing that can that that can prevent a TPK and and who knows what else. But uh, so you know it's uh, I just thought like well they're an important part of of DCC. A halfling almost always ends up in the party somehow. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to to be able to dig into the that a little bit and explore you know that theme and and yeah who who doesn't love halflings? I don't know. Yeah, we uh, when for, I ran, uh, I didn't run uh, Caught in the Mouth of Madness. I ran another adventure for uh, the Road Crew Game Day, and I let everybody bring their own characters. I said, I'm not going to give you pre-genesis. You guys just submit me what you want to play. And uh, the first person that saw me was a halfling. So they said, I'm going to play a halfling and everything. Like that. And we got to literally, we were like three days before the uh, before the event. And I just, I sent out, this is the party composition, everybody. And it was like, we had like a dwarf, a halfling, an elf, two wizards, and a thief. And I was just like, I'm totally fine with running this, guys. Uh, but, you know, there was just like, hmm, unfortunately. And then kind of the person who had submitted the halfling was just like, all right, I'll play a cleric. <laughs> but it was one of those things. It was like, I kind of I kind of was hoping that one of the wizards would kind of, you know, swap over because, you know, the perfect the perfect composition would be a cleric and a halfling, you know, in the party. But, you know, we we lost one for the other and um, it didn't go too well because the, the cleric ended up dying because uh, there was nobody to spend luck, you know. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, very important part to, you know, it's. The, the classic of you know what what is the classic you know adventure composition in like role playing games because of DCC the halfling has now become you know a necessary part of any successful party. So. <laughs> yeah, the importance of luck cannot be understated. So. Mm. So unless unless we're playing with fleeting luck, but <laughs> but but again, the importance of it is you know there's a luck economy that you have to take in mind. If you don't have halflings, you need another way to deal with them. So all right, and uh, you know I mean and of course halflings you know having having their origins in tolkien and tolkien is you know the the reason that you know we're we're here playing all these silly games anyway because you know if it wasn't for wasn't for the professor we wouldn't have had the you know the 1960s boom the revival of fantasy and everything and that wouldn't there would be nothing to inspire gary and you know dave and all the rest of that stuff so halfling's definitely important so no um yeah so okay so we halfling theme adventure um you know uh what for those people who haven't had a chance to take a look at it and what's kind of like the quick elevator pitch what's the synopsis of it you know without without giving away too much you know i mean so i mean it's it's a it's a pretty straight and to the point adventure in terms of you know you happen upon the scene of a halfling village or maybe your characters are from there and uh you are tasked with with trying to get to the bottom of some strangeness at the local kind of nobles uh manor which in this case is under a hill of course in in true halfling fashion and uh and i think you know you can imagine where it goes from there but but uh it's in true dcc form uh there is chaos afoot uh even in this quaint halfling village and uh and you know there's lots of fun along the way (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're true you know. and and bob the uh, bob the magic one i can say hobbit all i want <laughs> I, I just can't publish anything without the permission of the tolkien estate that says hobbit so no, but but, uh, but we can talk about that in historical content so hobbit 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 doob my moose all right <laughs> i think we've, we've covered up some of my favorite words here on the show uh so yeah so um so this i mean what having already done you know one adventure for you know publication you know the blackout crater valley and everything and then having to do one for dcc kind of like in a more professional you know kind of different you know different circumstances 
Uh, how was that experience for you? I mean, you know, I mean, was it was it challenging? Was it uh, there was something? You know, was it your was your background was having already done one of these? You know, to your advantage. <laughs> I think so. I mean, um, getting ready to do Blackout in Crater Valley, I I tried to do my homework in terms of just reading a ton of modules and uh, thinking about what I liked and what I didn't like and things that I loved about the structure of DCC uh, modules in general and just thinking like, okay, like if I'm going to emulate something that is really meant to feel like a part of this this you know canon of of Goodman Games um, products that I want it to look and feel to some degree like. A DCC adventure, but then I think coming over to actually do an official release with you guys, I had access to you, which was a huge um, asset for for me. Uh, and but also, you know, the to really look at like the style guide and and get into the nuts and bolts about like this is exactly um, how how we do things, and 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 so that was very helpful. And and yeah, I mean, I think it, it was different, um, but but really cool to be able to to sort of. Yeah, lean into the into the actual format that exists and um, and work within that. So yeah, it was awesome. Okay, <laughs> well that's good. I mean, from a development side of things, is that this this is always this is always a challenge, and uh, people kind of rise to the challenge in various different ways. Um, it, it's it's always easier to teach somebody uh, when they don't know what they're doing. I mean, that, it sounds kind of weird or anything, but they had no no. no preconceived notions so i mean i think it was the, i think might have been the fact is that you hadn't done like a a, a large amount of third-party stuff and i i think there are there's sometimes if you do a, if you like you for your own boss for a long time and then like you suddenly find yourself kind of working underneath somebody else sometimes there's issues because you're used to doing things like your way or anything like that but in your case you know you were very open to you know the my development notes and you know you took everything in stride and that's that's the perfect thing that a developer looks for so you know i you because I I'm in this too. I really wanted this to be the best adventure that you could put out and everything. So that's why you know there was back and forth and you know trying to make that happen. So I I think we did a good job of that. <laughs> oh so, yeah. yeah. And I mean it it helps that I that I really love DCC and that it inspired me to want to make you know adventures and my, my own publications in the first place. And I like the way they look. I like the way they feel. I like the layout and all that. So to be able to be like yeah you're you want to do this right. You want it to you want it to be uh you know uh. A proper release so yeah i think that you know made it a lot of fun. <laughs> well good good though um yeah i mean uh i know that i i i know in like the in the case of uh, in the packaging of this so, like you know obviously we put this together you know we had we go go back and forth with you know the design of the maps and doing your taking your original sketch map and then having the artists actually put them together that's always an exciting thing and seeing what they can do with that um i know the cover is awesome but you know i mean the only the uh, the only thing is that you know when for the uh for the road crew pit stops we kind of use the road crew art you know that's a great cover i just my only thing was just like can't we have one that's like more, you know, more, you know, if you know, evocative of what's actually inside of the cover? I mean, it's a great Doug Kovacs piece and I love it, but you know, but I would have kind of would have loved to have one that was specifically focused on caught of the caught of the uh, the mouth of chaos. But we, we were able to kind of address that a little bit by <laughs> um I know uh, I know one of the uh, I know which uh, some of one of the pieces that I love, and Elena, if you if you've not already brung it up, can you bring up the uh, demonic uh, corgis and show those off? Uh, we <laughs> we were we were having a discussion of like you know basically tell me what tell the tell the folks at home what you were telling me about like where basically where the corgi came from. And that was yeah for sure we were just talking about that and, and I was hoping we'd get back on that topic because I think it's pretty funny. But you know um, we were just going on the halfling theme and thinking about how, do, how do I, I didn't want it to just feel straight up like Hobbiton and the Shire. I wanted it to feel like, like halflings in the DCC world. And I'm thinking what kind of a dog would a halfling noble have? And, and right away, for whatever reason, just the Corgi popped into my mind, something about their weird little short legs and they've got the smile and everything. I saw like, I could just very easily picture this, this halfling, you know, noble kind of walking some Corgis. And then <laughs> to think about them sort of, twisted by the the powers of of chaos it was like yeah i just kind of I, I couldn't help but picture these i don't know mutated corgis and the artist really nailed it like just mm -hmm. it's yeah when i finally got to see that art that was very very cool yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I love the adventure because uh, it, it kind of it, it leans into something which I've been known to do, which is, you know, mess up your character. 
Uh, you know, what I mean? because there's there there are a chance, you know, there's a chance in this one that you might come out of the the kind of the halfling halfling manner not quite the same that you did when you went into that. I mean, you know, and and that's even if you're not a spellcaster. So uh, so yeah, the uh, that that, uh, that was a, that was a fun bit. You know, I, I don't want to ruin it too much, but uh, you know, it it's one of those things is that when, when you can introduce something like that, you you should. <laughs> Not to no spoilers, but one of my favorite things about DCC is uh, corruption and the way that your characters really they take more than just they get more than just scars as time goes on in the game. You know that you, your character comes out a very different, changed thing. And so, anytime I'm I'm doing anything for Goodman, I just want to lean into that as hard as I can and take every opportunity to throw mutations and and <laughs> things permanent permanent changes to the characters because that's the way when I'm playing. I love it when that stuff happens to my characters. So. I you know I I know I've played people I've played with people who are playing a spellcaster and like if they roll a one they are actually disappointed that they just got like a misfire you know it's like there's like I was hoping for corruption I was hoping for like a third hand or something you know so <laughs> uh, that corruption every time so uh so would you say that the uh the kind of the the, the uh, uh, uh a friend of mine once said uh he referred to like the wandering monster I think with the, with the wandering monster table uh in like old D&D as the wandering damage table uh so it's like so in this we have like the wandering mutation channel uh, the wandering mutation uh table um yeah. would, would you say that that's maybe your favorite thing about this or about this one or are there other parts of the adventure another facet of it that you you particularly like you know implementing or, or or coming up with yeah the the random mutations are definitely um probably what the, the most fun for me to write was coming up with with these these mutations and, and just picturing it at the table playing out that somebody's character that they lovingly created and you know have this whole concept of suddenly you know <laughs> <laughs> something like this happens to their character and and uh and they have to play that character for the rest of the that character's life in whatever adventures carry on you know i, I just they, i just thought that's great I, I i i had a smile on my face the whole time well they could always quest for it if they get tired of having that they can always, <laughs> they always say hey judge you know i'm tired of you know being half goblin or whatever I, uh, let's, <laughs> can we do anything about this and uh and that's where the judge says okay yes uh but it's going to cost you you know it's going to take a little while so uh, yeah. <laughs> so um so all right so this is you know this is your your kind of your your first thing under the, the goodman game stuff you're currently working on something you know also for me right now but we can't talk about that at yet this point but stay tuned for future ball of mics and this is this is how they, this is how we get you um but uh you know obviously we don't you know when we're dealing with freelancers we're dealing with people we don't put any you know exclusive contracts on you or anything like that do you have you been thinking about doing anything you know in the lines of you know either a sequel to or not, even directly or just like another kind of uh third party you know uh like like blackout and crater valley or you know something you've been working i know because i know you're busy you've got like what like 12 bands and you just moved and all the rest of that stuff so yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but no, definitely. I mean, when I even when I was writing Blackout and Crater Valley in the first place, I I wrote an I'll outline at that point for a trilogy uh, because the whole thing is really meant to feel kind of you know evocative of that VHS era, you know, nineteen eighties kind of teen horror movie. And so right away, I thought a, a trilogy makes perfect sense. Uh, and and develop this this you know plot line for what would would play out i've i've got a rough outline for return to crater valley which is the sequel um and uh i hope so <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> and i've got every intention of bringing that to kickstarter but uh yeah with uh i've been working pretty steady for you and and uh with life and everything else i have not been able to really um get it to the point i learned a lot doing a kickstarter and one thing i learned was have your project done before you launch the kickstarter because yes. you don't yes. the <laughs> uh that that is very important at least at least written you know at least written you know hopefully edited and everything you know art can art you know you can you can say i have this ready as we just as we just kind of demonstrated another kickstarter where there was an issue with using some you know uh ai generated art and everything and you know the community kind of like first you know, kind of poo-pooed that and then, you know, kind of rallied around it and, you know, through constructive criticism, basically addressed that situation. So, you know, so art can you, art can come later, but you definitely have to have something to work with. You can't be one of those, one of those Kickstarters like, I'm going to Kickstart this so I can pay for me to take six months off and write this thing, you know, like... <laughs> 
thankfully I was pretty far along and, and it didn't, it, it's not like the project was super delayed, but certainly uh, I was like, when I do this again, I want to do this the right way. And I backed enough Kickstarters that either never delivered or delivered two years after their deadline or whatever that looks like. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be doing that. So I think I'm definitely return to Crater Valley will happen. Uh, and maybe in the not distant future, I'm not sure it's, it's, it certainly is in progress. Uh, and then, and then the, uh, I haven't yet named what the final installment of the Crater Valley saga will be, but, but uh, it's going to be, it'll be a, a full arc. That's okay. just... <laughs> all right. Well, I wish you the best of luck on those. You know, I know, uh, I know sequels are not always easy, you know, I mean, uh, but uh, so any, any last words, anything else you want to plug before we, uh, we pull the plug on you and let you go back to your, your daily life. And <laughs> uh, you know, there's some, some more, projects we can't talk about that are that are coming down the pike eventually so i'm, I'm not going to plug anything like that but uh thanks for having me on and uh hopefully folks out there all you road crew judges get your hands on caught in the mouth chaos i hope you get get out there and run it for some of your friends and maybe people at your local shop or whatever and have fun with it yep. and if you're not a member of the road crew why not <laughs> you know, so uh, email Brendan at, at goodman-games.com and say, Brendan, I want to be a road crew judge so I can get a copy of Road Crew Pit Stop number two, uh, caught in the mouth of, of mouth, caught in the mouth of chaos by Zog. So, all right. So on those notes, uh, Zog, I'm going to let you go and then I'm going to be back and uh, talk to these people who are hanging out in the chat and let them know what else is going on in DCC land. So thank you very much for being on the show and uh, you know, look forward to working with you again in the future. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Hello, everyone. I'm back. It's just us now. So uh, thank you very much for, for hanging around. Uh, as I said, kind of a shorter show, uh, but I do have updates for you. So uh, so kind of gathering close, soak up the radiation from your, your monitor, and uh, and I'll tell you what's happening. So, uh, so those of you who have backed DCC number 100, uh, I'm going to see the vast majority of you, at least those of you here in the States, have now received yours. Um, we have, uh, at last count, which was actually a couple of days ago, we had almost 2,000 of the pledges which had gone out. And uh, But if you have not seen yours yet, do not despair. It is an ongoing process. Uh, we're working with a new logistic partner, which is actually kind of... Uh, intending to speed things up. Uh, Josh Snyderman has got it today. So yeah, so um, uh, so basically we are basically shipping stuff out from the West Coast. Uh, so as soon as it gets off the boat, it kind of gets in the mail rather than we probably said where you kind of has to wait to get to Missouri and then we ship it out. So uh, hopefully people are still getting on. Uh, so uh, we are we are fulfilling stuff uh, as fast as we possibly can. Uh, so those of you who had a chance to take a look at it, I hope that you do like what you see. It's been a very long process and uh, very, I haven't even gotten my copy yet. I saw it, but I hear it's, <laughs> you know, I've seen the PDF version of it. Um, but, you know, Harley obviously has, as usual, outdone himself. So this is going to be one for the ages. So uh, the, the tracking number will come. I promise you, I promise. It, it, it takes a little while, but, you know, as I said, we're, we're kind of getting these things out as fast as possible. I don't have anything particularly, I can't do anything about the process of it. I am on the opposite side of the country of it but i can assure you that it is coming out so that people have been getting tracking notices and it shows up the same day so it's a whole process i don't completely understand it i'm too busy keeping things going on so all right so but trust me it is coming and if anything goes wrong goodman games customer service is stellar and we will we'll make sure that everything is everything is good and you are happy when it's all done um so uh so basically uh if you were not part of the kickstarter of it and you have not received it yet um you know we're trying to wrap things up probably by the end of but probably the middle of october at least here in the states and at that point it will uh it will basically will be available uh pre-orders will start going out and be available retail so uh so if you did not back it you um you will be able to pick it up at your retail store so as well and uh, those of you, I know uh, there was an issue that people did not have PDFs. Uh, the PDF issue is also we were, we're we're taking care of that. Same thing. That's also the loot the body MP3 that people are 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 been um, uh, are due. We're basically we're doing all the digital stuff is kind of going on behind the scenes right now, getting everything put together. So a little patience, a little bit longer, but you know things are moving. Promise. You know, I promise you got it. And if you do have it, you have got it, and you take a look at it, and you say, "Look, there's a PDF code on Drive Through RPG. I want to get my copy of it." And you can't find it there. That's normal. Uh, the uh, usually it goes on Drive Through RPG after it becomes a commercial release. So probably in the next maybe two or three weeks, it will be up on Drive Through RPG, and you will be able to download a copy of it if you have not already got a copy through Backers Kit. So it, it's all working. So, but patience a little bit longer. We're almost there. All right. Um, so. 
Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, kind of at the start of the hour, uh, the uh, the warehouse is now fully operational. Just, I need my my empire, my emperor thing, you know. Uh, so orders are now they're now going out the door there, and we are getting caught up on the move backlog. Um, hopefully, the dust is going to settle in the next couple of weeks. And so, if you're waiting on stuff again, you know, give us a couple of weeks to kind of get caught up on it, and things will be flowing out in there. I know, I'm, I know. I ask, we're asking a lot of you guys to have patience with us. This is all we're, we're basically putting the logistics in place, which is going to, you know, help move things forward for the years to come. So, if you're if you are a fan at this point, we appreciate you being a fan at this point. Um, you know, you can say I was there doing the big move of 2023, and I had to wait for you know wh however long it was to to get everything together. And it's 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 and you get a sticker out of it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not the greatest compensation, but we can do what we can do. So, yeah, it is a fully armed and operational warehouse. Yes, thank you very much. All right. So, um, all right. Um, as I did kind of allude uh, earlier on, um, actually, I told you all about it. So tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Channel, Eastern Eastern Time, here on uh, the official Good Game Twitch show is going to be re the return, of, return to the Purple Planet, which is basically our... Uh, our in-depth delve into uh, the Purple Planet, into DCC 84, number 84. We're on like 103 out, and 104 has been announced. I'm working on 105 right now as we speak. But um, this has been out for a long time. We are in purple times. Yes, this is, this is, this, one what I might almost say there's a purple haze uh, kind of floating around all over the space right now. This is going to be, um, this is our delve into the Purple Planet uh, as it was conceived by Harley Stroh. And uh, Harley is going to come on the show with me. We're going to, uh, tomorrow we're going to start and we're going to start off with the, like the thousand mile view. What is the Purple Planet? What is it? What do I need to know about the Purple Planet? Uh, we've had a lot of people discover DCC in the last couple of years and they missed out on the first time, you know, so we want you to have the proper backing to know what the Purple Planet is and why it's so damn cool and why you should be backing it in 121 days uh when the when the backer when it goes live on backer kit and you get your your chance to get your hands on it because it's going to be awesome so um so we're as i said we're probably going to have you know uh, uh harley can't make every show um i have to <laughs> so uh so uh so you're going to be stuck with me you know every other week for you know for now until you know january or whatever it is going to be uh but with, there's it's more than just a planet that is purple that is it one would think that but uh, but you know this it's 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 like Walt Whitman. It is large. It contains multitudes. It's a whole planet. You know, actually, 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 the parallel of our planet is just a plateau. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people don't realize that there's a whole other planet on top of that. You know, we just 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 a little bit of it, a little teeny tiny bit. If only there was some way we could describe more about that. But in order to find out that, you'll have to tune in to return to the Purple Planet starting tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. And as usual, it will be on YouTube after the fact and everything like that because Elena is on it. So uh, so that's basically, that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, a lot of stuff is, we have a lot of big projects in the works right now, which so that in the warehouse movie, why I don't have a lot to kind of announce, you know, going forward. Uh, for the short term, we might, this show might be a half hour as we kind of get things up and get things out the door and everything. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, a very excited time to be behind the scenes and uh very hope very much hope that you hang around with us as we kind of start talking more about what's coming uh because there's a lot of cool stuff a lot of really big projects things that i'm very happy about and stuff which is making me very tired because it takes up a lot of my time so uh so with that in mind and the fact that a lot of my time has already been taken over and it's the start of spooky season so maybe it's time for me to go watch a scary movie tonight i think uh it's just about 9 30 so i think this is the time where we will call it the night for the Maw of Mike for October. So thank you very much for those who hang out in the chat. Thank you who are watching this post post air time on YouTube or on Twitch or whatever. And I will be back in just a month to talk more about what's going on in DCC land. But tomorrow, return to the Purple Planet next Monday, the final. I think it's that. No, maybe it's not next Friday. Now, coming up. <laughs> We have there's one more episode of Keep Crawling with Bre uh, Mike and Brendan. Um, I have to double check when that is, but I feel I feel like that's I feel like that's next one uh, next week. But uh, we'll do more about this. Uh, you'll see a lot of me. All right, that, I think that's enough. That's it. All right, I am out of here. Check you all on the Twitch in the future. Have a great night, and until I see you again, stay awesome.